Ladies and gentlemen, Lake Oswego, 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 uh, Oregon, which is right outside of Portland. I could say Portland, right? And I would be accurate on some level. Nobody would object. No, nobody would object. Uh, And uh, uh, we once every two weeks check in with her to see how she is health wise and uh, just uh, what's on her mind. And there's always yours. There's always a lot on your mind. And also what's on yours. Well, you do a thing called at time goes by dot net, right? It's your blog and it's about what it's like to get old. Yes. All right. And that way for 15 years. Which really sucks, I might add. Okay. Now. Well, you think so. I don't mind. You don't mind. Okay. Well, uh, all I'm saying is like, today. T- t- oh, there goes your phone. Sorry. Uh, that's all right. Forgot to turn off the phone. I turn them all off. I leave them in another room, except for the watch, and the watch I have to turn off. Anyway, uh, it is going to thunderstorm today. And my head feels like a fucking balloon, right? Can I tell you? Now, I didn't used to have that happen. Hey, yeah, it's going to rain. Things. Big deal. Things but, happened when you were a toddler that didn't happen later. Did you expect things not to change through life? Yes. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I always heard about, you know, old people could tell when the weather was going to change because their arthritis acted up or their knee or their rheumatism or whatever. You remember that? And I always thought that was like an old wives' tale. It's not. (laughs) It's not. I can tell. I I say to my wife, I say, "Uh, uh, Adair, is it supposed to rain tomorrow? And she says, yes. I said, I knew it. I could feel it, you know. And this morning I woke up and my head was throbbing and everything, and it's it's the weather. So, uh, and that's one of the things, folks, that sucks about getting old. Okay, did I name one thing that sucks about getting old? Okay, who are you to who am I to complain to you? Okay. By the way, you know, it can, is what it is. Can I say that you are looking healthier right now than you have in a long time? Well. I don't know. Maybe it's the good news I got this week. Which is? Um, I had chemo on Thursday. Yeah. Um, my regular infusion. Yeah. But before that, they did a, a CT scan. Mm-hmm. And if you remember, two months ago, I had a T- CT scan with very, very good um, results mm-hmm. that the cancer nodules or whatever... They call them. Yeah. Um, had half of them had shrunk, and half of them were no longer visible. And they say it that way because that doesn't mean they aren't there. They're just they just got smaller. Right. And they can't see them right now. And um, so this time, um, sort of the same thing happened. Yeah. But not you know maybe not quite as much, but it happened. Yeah. And as he had suggested two months ago, the oncologist, um, because it, it looks so good, they're going to switch my CT scans from every two months to every three months. Yeah. And he said to me, you're going to be with us for quite a while yet. Wow. That, now that's good news. You know, mm. that's not an official thing. You know, you write down in a in a chart and I don't know what a good while means. <laughs> but uh, but I liked hearing that. Yeah. Yeah. So so maybe now is the is the uh, uh, and let's face it, when we talk about chemotherapy, we all kind of a chill goes down our spine because it's supposed to be so brutal and so on and so forth. And you're kind of showing it. Yes, it is. And then it isn't. Uh, but can it completely get rid of the cancers? No. No. no it, it doesn't do that. It slows the growth. Right. So that you have more healthy time. Yeah. Um, and nobody, it's different with everybody. You know, every chemo is different with everybody. So uh, this seems to be working for me. Yeah. And he said that pretty soon, um, 
perhaps we will skip a dose and give me four weeks without chemo. Oh, okay. Um, which would just give me a rest. Because I had chemo on Thursday. Um, I was tired of this time than usual. I was really, really tired. Yeah. And I spent most of the last two days in bed. I'd get up for a little while and just go back to bed. I just couldn't stay up. But this morning I got up and I've got a lot more energy. I'm not ready to run around the block, but... Um, yeah, I feel pretty good today. You're feeling peppy and zippy. Well, no, not that we. I wouldn't go that far. Oh, okay. You wouldn't go that far. All right. Uh, so, so this makes me feel very good. And the side effects again are the the fatigue was heavier this time than it's been for a couple of times, and I have a couple of other very minor side effects that wouldn't affect much of anybody. And I feel something funny in my throat. You say you can't hear it, yeah. but it, my voice from the inside sound feels funny. But um, anyway, that was very good news for my 78th birthday. Yeah, now she had her 78th birthday. And in a way, birthdays are now a big deal. <laughs> yes. I never, I really did not believe I would make it this far. Pancreatic cancer is lethal. And uh, very few people... Probably only ten percent of of, of uh, pancreatic cancer patients live more than a year, and I've I'm up to nearly two years since since the diagnosis. I had it longer than that, but since they diagnosed me, it's been two years. So I'm doing quite well. You're and doing I'm quite happy about you're it. You're doing very well. You're doing yes. very well. Now, uh, no sign of the pancreatic cancer coming back, right? Well, it has. It's in my lungs now, well, and it's in my peritoneum. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it spread from there, but I mean, in the actual pancre pancreas itself, there's no growth. Well, who knows? You know, who um, knows? they see what they can see in the in the CT scan. It's pancreatic cancer. That's where it began, and that's what it's called. No, it could spread to anywhere. I heard a, a piece of news this week. I was watching the news, and they said at six thirty, we'll tell you. Uh, there may be a new cure for pancreatic cancer. Or something no, they like didn't that. say cure. If they did, they're wrong. Well, I, I and then I wasn't able to hear the news because I had something else I had to do. So I had no idea what that item was. And uh, do you know anything about any kind of new ignore treatment? Ignore it. Ignore it. I thought once a month something like that comes along. It's announced. Every the news people make a big hullabaloo about it, and you'll never hear about it again. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. It um, and 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 it's not a cure. Nobody's anywhere near a cure for pancreatic cancer. What they really would like to do, and what my surgeon talked to me about, and people he works with in research facilities around the world, is that they could find a blood test for it. Because one of the reasons so many people die of pancreatic yeah. cancer is they can't find it until it's so far gone, stage four. There's nothing they can do. So uh, what would be great is that they had a blood test, and he was telling me that even if it was a blood test for, let's say, five different kinds of cancer, mm -hmm. you would at least have it, you know, you, you've got a, got a goal. You've got five kinds of cancer you've identified, and then you can go through and see which one it is. Right. Um, but they've been trying to do that for years and still haven't been able to accomplish it. Yeah, well, let me say to people who, who are not aware, uh, the pancreatic cancer is probably, I would say, the most deadly of the cancers. I mean... No, no, third most deadly. What's a, What are the other two? So I, I know what to worry about. I think it's breast cancer and certainly bre breast cancer and lung cancer. But uh, I would think that uh, uh, pancreatic cancer is the most deadly because breast cancer, you can, if you go to the doctor no, and get a mammogram. What they're doing is counting statistics, oh, not okay. guessing. It's okay. how many people die from the from the universe of breast cancer yeah. or lung cancer or whatever. But all I know is that uh, I, I had a friend, for instance, at 32 who died of pancreatic cancer, and as soon as I heard that diagnosis, I said, he's he's dead. You know, I mean, it was, it, it's a, uh, when I say the most deadly of diseases, I don't mean more people die from it. I just simply mean 
that the prospect at the point that you find it out, because as you say, there's no way of finding it out till you're probably at stage four. You no, know, you're just amazing, Alex. What? You keep looking for hope where it doesn't exist. No, what I'm saying is, is that I say that it's the most deadly because of the nature of, of the disease itself and the fact that it doesn't pronounce itself early. You know, with breast cancer, you take mammograms. Uh, with uh, what was the second can most uh, cancer? Cancer? Lung cancer. Huh? Lung cancer. Lung cancer. Well, there you can just quit smoking. <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, but the, but you can get chest X-rays and things like that. And, you know, but w what you're saying is with pancreatic cancer, you, it's got to be pretty far gone before the symptoms even make themselves apparent. Well, no, there's plenty of symptoms. Did you have a lot of symptoms that were like weird and they couldn't figure out what it was? Right. Yeah. For yeah. about six months they did that before they found it. And the reason is, is I don't know how much of me shows on the screen, but pancreas is somewhere like right down here. Yeah. And, it, and it's behind and hidden behind all kinds of other stuff that's in there. So you can't, like if you've ever had a doctor kind of palpate your your yeah. abdomen what they're feeling is the liver and the stomach and that and behind those things yeah are the um, um is the pancreas and then you can't feel that because it's hidden behind those so it's very difficult mm -hmm. um you know then there are people like ruth bader ginsburg 10 or 12 years ago they were doing something with her surgically uh, that had nothing to do with pancreatic cancer, and they found it very, very early. And she didn't even have to have the Whipple. It was so early. Um, but that rarely happens. The Whipple surgery, folks. Some is, other reason, yeah. and um, and yeah. happened to find it. When you say the Whipple, a lot of people don't know what we're talking about. That's a, a, a surgical procedure for pancreatic oh, cancer. Oh, is it ever? <laughs> and, and they literally, they gut you like a carp, Right. Well, they right down the middle, and then they take out your, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> gallbladder. Yeah. Duodenum. Mm hmm A bit of your stomach. Mm hmm Um, and they have to then, I think there are a couple other things, and then they have to rearrange all the hoses to go to new places because these pieces are missing, oh, and you have geez. to take a certain enzyme for the rest of your life because. Um, you only have half your pancreas. They take out the diseased part. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so it doesn't make enough enzymes to properly process food. So you have to take these pills for the rest of your life. Wow. Well, eh, now, no, not, no, not, I have trouble remembering, now, but it's not a big thing. But here's the big question I have for you. At this point in our discussion, what would you rather talk about, cancer or Donald Trump? I can't pay attention to Trump. <laughs> Actually, about Trump, is there's never anything new with him. Every day he wakes up and does something meaner than he did yesterday. And he's a very mean, awful man. But it's all the same thing. If every, it doesn't, you know, I mean, one day it's Kirsten Nielsen that he's dumping, but another day it's another person, or he's going to separate babies from their mothers again or whatever whatever he comes up with each day it's just one more thing of here we are i'm going to make a whole lot of mess again and i'm going to make you all talk about me um and i'm tired of it i just don't pay attention anymore it, it, i look at the headlines and it's all the same thing it was last week it never changes so actually what you're saying is cancer is a better discussion to have than Donald Yes, Trump. I think it's a lot more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so we've we've determined by a test of our uh, of our uh, of our uh, uh, guest that uh, uh, cancer is better than Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we've decided, right? I guess so, something like that. Yes. Wow. You yeah. know, it's um it's funny now that Apparently, I don't know, you know, what length of time we're talking about when the doctor says a good while. I don't know what that means, but um, apparently better than I might have expected. All right. Let me put it in this in this context. Trump will be around as president for a while. <laughs> Is that yeah, good no, or I bad? I don't know what that means either. That... You know, so. <laughs> okay. Um, but... Uh, 
but I'm going to have to rethink things. I have been thinking about what to do with my day-to-day life for the past couple of years, as though I was an extreme short timer. Yeah. And so, kind of, you know, I'm not doing a very good job of it, but trying to get my life in order for my friend who's going to take care of everything when I die. Yeah. Um, and and things that you know you don't go on with regular life. I mean. If I see a pair of pants or a sweater I like, am I going to buy it? I've got enough clothes. Yeah. Um, and so I make decisions that way. But now I have to, it, you know, my time maybe has expanded a little bit. So I have to think of how I use that time a little differently because it's not as short as I thought it was. Yeah, but. I haven't worked that out yet. Then again, I mean, I could say that I'm around for a while. Well, you know, know, I mean, uh, obviously his intention was to say that I'm not going to die next week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, two weeks, two weeks from now, it could be that you won't hear from me. You know, Uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, there are always those possibilities. I had a friend of mine. God, I I had a friend of mine. He was my lawyer and he died. Uh, And I would go to the funeral, but he probably sent me a bill posthumously. So, you know, uh, but he was... And he was a good lawyer to have. His name was Reamer. Uh, and that's a good name for a lawyer. You know, don't screw around with me or you're going to have to deal with my lawyer, Mr. Reamer. <laughs> and I always like to joke about the fact that his mother had a divorce firm of, uh, and it was a partnership, uh, the divorce firm of Skinner and Reamer. So, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that went right past me. Say again. The, divo- the, the divorce firm of Skinner and Reamer. So, anyway. I guess I just see those as names. I'm sorry. Skinner. Skinner. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, I've been telling that joke for the last week since he died. But I felt really bad about that, you know. Because, you know, the, the thing about getting older, and you know this at 78, is all the people you, you're you seeing die now. You know. And you're still here. You're still uh, above room temperature, you know. And they're all, and they're going. And you say to yourself, wow, you know. And they didn't go like at a, a, a young age. You know, they went maybe. At, Not if they're my age. They, 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 they went maybe at 77 and you go, oh my God. You know, it's like, as I always like to say a joke about my mother that when she was 92 uh, or when she was 95, a friend of hers died at 92. And she said to me, I swear to you, gee, and she was so young. It's all, it's all perception. Yeah. <coughs> so, you know, I mean, um, uh, uh, you know, you, you you see all these people that you know and they're going and it's not it's not fun. I mean, have you written about that on your blog about that factor? I must have mentioned it. Yeah. But it, um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> it comes with the territory if you live long enough, you know. I mean, every old person who lives a long time. Yeah, that happens. You lose all your friends, and and that's and I think that's part of the dying process, that we no longer are connected to the world we understand. It's become a new place, and part of that is the people who are missing in our lives, mm-hmm. and the how the world runs from us social or cultural point of view and what's important socially and culturally is very different from we when we were in our 20s 30s 40s yeah it's a whole new world right that we're not really part of oh we're invisible to it you know well i mean you don't have to go that far it's not entirely true but the the point is i think that's important in that when it comes near time to die you need to be letting go and be prepared to leave you know yeah and i think that that a large part of that is when old friends go uh when they die it makes the world a little emptier a little not like it was not what we're familiar with right can we Um, go can we go kicking and screaming are we allowed to do that whatever you i think (laughs) there's no right way to die die any way you want yeah yeah, I was thinking, I'll tell you, this is, may sound silly. Okay, so just tell me I'm being silly. 
But, you know, I've always had a great fear of death. So lately I've been trying to come to terms with that because, you know, it, 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 it's down the road. I, you know, I, I, uh, I think it was. Uh, it was just magic mushrooms. It was John. No, but it was John Cleese who described it to me as the yawn ever yawning, the the grave ever yawning. Uh, that that you know, as I go towards the grave ever yawning, as he put it, he said, blah 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 blah. Well, as I saw that, I sat down the other night, and I looked over the screensaver I had of space of stars, of planets, and things like that. And I thought, maybe we just become space dust. But that's true. <laughs> yeah. We all are. Yeah. I mean, that's not a new idea. It's, it's, it's well, a scientific fact. That we're space dust. Well, maybe we go back to being space dust. I mean, I thought the loveliest way uh, it was put is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Ten years ago, he said, we are all space dust. Yeah, and I'm not sure the dust was the word, but close enough, and and that's just beautiful. I think that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I think maybe that that is a true way of putting it. And I, I suddenly came to that conclusion, and and I went further with it. And this is where I guess you'll say I'm stupid, is that I started to look at science fiction, and the stories we tell in science fiction, and I'm just wondering if that isn't some kind of uh, racial memory we have of what we really are. You, I want to believe that. Huh? If you want to believe well, that. Well, does that make but, some... I mean, since nobody knows, you get to believe anything you want. Mm-hmm. But that we write, we write about things which are in our racial memory, and we don't know it. So we make up these things about space and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Who knows? You know, who knows? <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, grass. Sorry about the cough. It's yeah. Just bad. Uh, and and my the phone. phone. <laughs> sorry. I'd rather the cough than the phone, but you know. <clears throat> <clears throat> but uh, it's uh, we get to believe whatever we want, you know, because nobody knows. Nobody <laughs> ever came back and told us. So. Yeah. Um, we can believe anything we want, and that's just fine. By the way, what's the cough the result of? Is that your condition, or is it just years of smoking or whatever? Oh, there's something in my... They're working on it. <laughs> oh, they're working on it. I yes. see. You go down, they put you up on the rack, they, <laughs> they lube you, and then they, they work I may on end it. up with one of those little things you breathe into once a day. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Well, better than my wearing that thing over my shoulder. Yeah, we, we 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 don't want to have to do a show where you've got one of those, you know, those whatever those things are yeah. that they. Um, I, I I've been told that that's oxygen, but I don't see how that's oxygen. I I don't know, but it, it works. It is oxygen. I've had it in the hospital. Yeah, it just pumps more yeah. oxygen into you. More so you see, folks, we'd rather talk about dying, death, cancer. Uh, 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 wait a minute, cutting yourself open like a carp rather than Donald Trump. Okay, <laughs> so we, we've proven that today. Now, what's going to be interesting... What I didn't tell you is I had a nice birthday party. Oh, t tell us about that, yeah. Um, and my son came and his wife, Kathy, and their son, Henry George, which sounds like a member of British royal family. Yeah. And... Um, some three or four other friends and they did all the work my friend came from new jersey yeah and she and tom my son did all the work and we had a fabulous meal and a wonderful visit and um and henry seemed to have a good time too henry george and um and I had, I had, since it was my birthday and I get to do what I want, mm -hmm. um, I found a fabulous dinosaur book I gave him. And uh, little kid, little boys are into dinosaurs. Oh, of course. So I was into not. dinosaurs when I was a they kid. They were when we were kids. When I was a kid, I was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we like them because they're big and they're klutzy and they, they bump into things and they're like kids. You don't know that they <laughs> bump into things. We well, made that up. We, we just like uh, them because they were big, you know. Yeah, well, some were little, too. Well, I, they never seem to put... Do you know that there's... I went through this book. There are a whole lot of new dinosaurs they found that weren't around when we were kids. 
Oh, really? A ton of bunch more, yeah. And this kid is four years old, my grandkid. Yeah. And if you call, if you point to a T Rex and call it something else, he will tell you the difference and correct you. Oh, really? He knows all of that stuff. Yes. That's incredible. That's yeah. just incredible. But so, I mean, so you had your birthday, and here's the thing. Here's cake. the thing that's Lots interesting, ladies and gentlemen, and, and and you should know this. That when she says my son, that's a term she has only used for less than a year now. Yes, because out true. of nowhere, a child she had when she was, what, 18 were you? At the time? 21. Oh, you were 21. Yes. Uh, and I met her right after that. Uh, she, she gave up for adoption and never heard from. And then all of a sudden, because of all these DNA stuff and everything, she gets a note saying, this may be your, what, your son or close. Well, it was a wonderful first line. He's, he wrote in the email it, it 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 appears that you and i are intimately related <laughs> <laughs> so no shit <laughs> and this was after her diagnosis of cancer okay and all of a sudden she finds this son she never well, she knew she had but she had never been able to meet and uh, and now you say my son came over Yes. And I'm going. And he lives not about forty-five minutes away. Yeah, and he's how old, your son? Fifty-six. Fifty-six. So that really makes you feel. That's really old. weird, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is really weird. <laughs> hey, we you know we've run out of time, and you have been in sync for every single. Hey, we finally second. did it. <laughs> we finally did it. We finally put you in sync. Hey, good talking to you, sweetheart. Let's do it again in two weeks, okay? We will. Take good care. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett, Time Goes By.net is her blog. Thank you, Ronnie. Take a look at.